any topic, any discussion on AI must start with addressing the elephant in the room, which is chat GPT, right? Chat GPT is one of the fastest services in the history of business to reach 100 million users. Just two months. All of you are aware of that, and I'm sure all of you have used chat GPT in the last three months. So what I would like to do is to unpack what does it take to build something like a chat GPT, and what is the future of AI? Let's go back a little bit. Let's go back 10 more years. In 2011, Steve Jobs unveiled Apple iPhone 4S. An integrated feature of that iPhone 4S was Siri, the language assistant. And Siri was making some incredibly comical mistakes. You can see some of them on the screen here. Incredible mistakes, right? And people thought, you know what? This is not going to work. But just in five short years after that, Sundar Pichai in 2016 mentioned that 20% of all Google searches were voice searches. The technology had evolved a lot in just those five years. What happened there? Just to understand this a little bit and to build this mystery a little bit further, in 2020, Sam Altman, who is the CEO of OpenAI, made this statement in one of the, uh, one of the interviews that, remember, you know, data is important, but even more important than data is compute, how much compute you're throwing. Right? So what did ChatGPT exactly do? For that, we have to understand this equation. One of the most important equations to understand in the world of AI is this equation, which is error, is a function of data, compute, and the techniques that you're bringing to the party. Data, all of us understand what data is, right? The more, the better. Higher quality of data, better it is. If you bring in lots of data and then throw in incredible amount of compute, and bring the right techniques, together you can bring the error rates down. What happened with ChatGPT and Siri and voice assistants and so on is that data, compute, and techniques, multiply, the multiplicative effect of these three meant that the accuracy improved from 17% error rates back in 2011 when, when Steve Jobs launched iPhone 4S with Siri, error rates were 17% in voice recognition. Therefore, it was not able to understand a language, accents, etc. And now the error rates are in this are sub 4%, which, is, which means it's better than human accuracy. And then adoption really took off. And that is one of the reasons why ChatGPT reached 100 million users in such short time. Here's what they did. If you see the data in GPT-1, they used much even smaller data. But in, in GPT-2, they used 1.5 billion parameters. This means 1.5 billion thing, knobs that they can tweak. 1.5 billion knobs that they can tweak to get the right effect. From 1.5 billion, by, by 2021, in GPT-3, they went to 175 billion parameters. 175, no, 175 billion knobs that they're tweaking to fine tune the engine. They really threw in incredible amounts of, this is such a large model. That's why these are called large language models, right? Now, what, did the, what is the compute they throw in? They throw in 285,000 CPU cores and 10,000 GPUs, put them together to, to deliver this performance. And the data, the, the data they threw in was 570 gigabytes. This is by some estimates, it's not official estimate, but 570 gigabytes, which is 30 times the size of Wikipedia, 30 times the size of the, all of Wikipedia. So they brought in tremendous amounts of data. They threw in large amounts of compute. They built very large models with a new technique called transformers. Transformers as a technique was developed in 2017 by Google researchers. They used transformers. They put in this tremendous amounts of compute, and they made some more you know, technique-wise innovations. So they did data, compute, and techniques, and therefore brought the accuracy, down, accuracy to such a level that it became magically good. All things, all good things in technology appear like magic when they're launched. And this is one of those magical things that's happened. But the behind the magic are these three things, data, compute, and technique. Now, be, now if, if, you're in, if you ask the question, what is the hottest programming language? In 2020, the hottest programming language, and 2021 also, and 2022 also, the hottest programming languages were 
JavaScript, and Python. So 2023, it appears the hottest programming language is now English. Because now, if you put, if you write code, if you write English in that, see in the comments in the code, code gets generated automatically. This is GitHub Copilot, right? So what's happening is it is dramatically accelerating. Given AI has become so good that it's actually accelerating tech. Imagine if you're a $15 billion IT services company and you suddenly realize that you can be 100x, 10x to 100x in terms of productivity. The productivity of the IT industry is 10 lines of code per day, 10 lines of good code per day, right? If they can write 10 lines of code in the, in the first one minute, what are they going to do for the rest seven hours and 59 minutes and in their day? Just imagine what's going to happen to that. But the hottest programming language is now English, right? So the question that keeps coming out, coming back is, is AI going to replace jobs? Will AI replace human beings? No, AI is not going to replace human beings. But what's going to happen is that humans that use AI will replace or outperform humans that don't use AI. That is the key thing to take out, is that this tells you more than ever, ever before that humans that use AI will outperform humans that don't use AI. This AI is a paradigm shift in computing. Because if you think about what was computing for the last 100 years, it was about telling machines what to do and machines faithfully reproducing what to tell them to do. That has changed. These machines can think. This was a, this good old fashioned AI that you see on the top is what AI was back then. It was about teaching machine lots of rules to understand and learn from. No, the new AI doesn't work like that. Machines can be trained, can learn to think and with examples, supervised learning, you give examples, it learns from examples. Unsupervised learning, you just give it lots of data, it figures out anomalies, patterns, etc. And in reinforcement learning, it does actions, it gets rewards, and it gets better and better. And the new thing that's come up, which ChatGPT has done, is self-supervised learning, where it learns with the own data. It learns, in the way ChatGPT learns is, you take a sentence, it tries to predict the next word in the sentence, and by doing predicting the next word and learning from that. It gets feedback, it gets learns from it, and so it's a form of self-supervised learning which is creating all this magic. So AI, this AI is very different. And given this AI, you know, obviously everything is changing. If you look at image recognition, or if you look at speech recognition, or if you look at games, if you look at breast cancer diagnosis, in each of these areas, AI is matching and exceeding human performance in a broad range of tasks. And we feel like we are very, very close to that place where a generalized machine can start to match and exceed human performance in not just in narrow tasks, but in broad range of tasks. Now, I gave you one of the three equations. There are two more equations that you have to think of if you have to drive great advantage using AI. Number one, you, we saw error equation, data into compute into techniques. What's the second one? If you want to drive great results with AI, just algorithms is not good enough. You have great algorithms that can drive great results, but you need solid engineering because if you have to manage large, vast amounts of data that's sitting in various parts of the world, you have to bring all of them to the problem. So it requires you to bring in significant engineering to bring the data to the problem. And then you have to automate decision making, which means that you have to, in milliseconds, in microseconds, you have to make decisions happen. So you need engineering skills in that too. So AI plus engineering, and then you need design to understand exactly what is the problem to solve and how to drive adoption. One of the things that ChatGPT has also done is design. If you see, one of the reasons it has really taken off is because the, it is a very well-behaved bot. It gives you very well-structured, in a nice English. It knows exactly what problems to answer, what the, it doesn't want. It is confident. It is good. It, is, it has great language. It has great manners. And that is also because the design has has incorporated those elements into it. So if you bring in AI, engineering, and design, you can drive great results with AI. And the last one, if you especially, you're building a culture of analytics or AI inside your organization, you need solid talent, a culture of experimentation, and a governance model, because AI is not necessarily foolproof. AI has still lots of bugs. As you've seen with ChatGPT also, it makes lots of mistakes, and some of them very confidently. So you need a right kind of governance mechanism so that you can drive responsible AI and then also make sure that the models are running and not, and, and not deteriorating over time. So if you use these three equations, you can drive great AI advantage.
I'll give you one example of what Fractal has done uh, in our business called Cure.ai. Now, we incubated Cure.ai a few years ago, and the problem was to see how to br bring down errors in radiology. If you go to a radiologist today, you get 23% error rates in finding uh, you know, any abnormalities in, in an X-ray. So we built a system by which you can take an X-ray and it detects 30 different abnormalities in an X-ray. And this came in very handy. We built it very quickly. During COVID, we actually evolved that model to work to identify COVID. And this was as early as March 2020. In fact, in f February 2020, we had the fundraising party for Cure. And then I asked uh, the CEO of Cure, Prashant, hey, why don't we build a COVID detection algorithm? And literally within four weeks, we built a COVID detection algorithm. By March 2020, COVID took off. And even as late, as early as March 2020, hospitals in Italy were using uh, the, the Cure.ai algorithm to find out if patient is progressively getting worse. So they would look at daily differential x-rays. Every day you look at x-ray and you look at what is the difference between yesterday's x-ray and today's x-ray. Most doctors are not able to see the difference because x-rays change very little day by day. But an algorithm is able to spot small little differences in those x-rays. And then using that, they were able to find out which, which patients are getting worse, which patients, will, which patients will not make it, or will have to go to the ICU and so on. So you can use AI not just to build you know, build products, new, you, know, you know, do things like chat GPT, you can actually use them in real world applications where you can bring in deep science and deep tech together, right? You can, not just this, there are countless other problems where AI is now making fundamental breakthroughs in deep science. Think of protein folding. How does a, the three dimensional structure of protein is something that AI has recently cracked. So even though chat GPT was a seminal moment for 2022, in November 2022, the bigger moment in, in, in my world, in case of AI, was what DeepMind did in July, on July 31st, 2022. They released the three-dimensional structures of 200 million proteins. Just imagine if you want to solve any major problem in the world, any healthcare problem in the world, you have to decode the structure of the protein that underlying that disease or the virus and so on. And that protein structure is, is a hard problem. So DeepMind, using incredibly good deep reinforcement learning, actually figured out the, the three-dimensional structure of 200 million proteins. And remember, before that, uh, figuring out the structure of a protein meant one PhD. One PhD working full-time would develop the three-dimensional three structure of one protein. And they solved that problem by solving it for 200 million proteins at once. So deep science and AI are beginning to merge. So just to conclude, A, AI is a paradigm shift in computing. It will alter the way we work, live, and play. It will, and AI is not going to replace human beings, but human beings that use AI are going to replace human beings that don't use AI. And finally, AI is going to not just make a difference to deep tech, it's going to make a difference to, to deep science and the way we live. Thank you.